welcome everyone and, and thanks for joining us for, for this um, lecture program, a digital one, because we of course cannot come together here in, in COVID-19 times in, in a physical meeting. This is a joint uh, program, um, the German Embassy in Islamabad, the German General Consulate in, in Karachi and the IFA, the Institute of Uh, for uh, Institute for Auslandsbeziehung in, in Germany is, is offering. And um, I'm very much welcoming um, our general consul in Karachi, uh, Mr. Holger Ziegler, who will um, have the, the introductory words here um, to, to address us. Yeah, hello, good afternoon, everybody. It's five o'clock in the afternoon in Karachi, one o'clock in Germany. It's a time everywhere in the world. It's a time to learn, to discuss and to study. Um, I'm here to greet you, to welcome you. Thank you for participating in this event. Thank you to the organizers for organizing it, bringing uh, us here online. But I am here not just as an official to greet you. I'm here because I wanted to, because I'm personally touched by the subject. Um, right now, it's two months, I've been here now in Karachi as Consul General, um, before in Jeddah, before in Berlin. Uh, a 20 year long career uh, in the diplomatic service brought me here, but before, in a previous life, I had five years of work in computer science, particularly artificial intelligence. So three decades back, um, that was the lifeblood, the center of my life, and uh, it has never left me. Uh, I've always tried to follow, I've always stayed engaged. So artificial intelligence is the one catchword that we have here tonight in our, in our event. The other catchword is Industry 4.0, and that again is something very personal for me. Uh, in my last posting in Berlin, in the economic department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, we organize conferences where diplomats come together with the rep representatives of German industry and trade uh, in order to discuss the challenges in this world. What can we do? What can we do together? How can we bring Germany closer to the world, the world closer to us? And uh, my task always was also to identify the burning subjects, um, bring them closer to the heart of my diplomatic colleagues. And um, five years ago in 2015, um, we gave them a word, a catchphrase that nobody had heard before. And since then, the uh, Foreign Diplomatic Service is talking about it. Um, Industry 4.0, Industry 4.0. Because you all may have heard about the Internet of Things, uh, basically an American or international concept, um, consumer-based, um, where uh, our handheld um, um, attachments to our bodies start to talk to each other and bring us important information. The German version of it is Industry 4.0. That's when the machines start talking to each other. That's when the design process starts talking to the engineer and has input from the customer in the very end. This is very important for us, Germany, because um, uh, contrary to, to many other countries, we have a strong production base in Germany. We still have machines which do things and get them out into the world. And um, therefore the, the modernization of this world is extremely important for us. Um, that is also why we brought this topic to Pakistan because equally, Uh, Pakistan has a very, very strong production uh, base here. There are factories that need to be um, modernized, but they need to be brought into the current world where everything talks to each other across continents um, all the time. Therefore, thank you very much for coming. Um, I hope to learn a lot tonight and uh, I will not take more of your time. Um, let's hear um, the introduction. Um, of our panelists, first by my colleague, Christine Rosenberger in, in the Embassy in Islamabad, and then by my colleague, Maren Dick uh, from my consulate here in Karachi, please. Yeah, so um, let me maybe introduce um, our uh, moderator uh, for, for today's session. Uh, so we are very glad and proud to have uh, one of our um, German DART alumni here as a moderator, Dr. Yasir Nias Khan, uh, who is based in Lahore and who has uh, studied, as he told me, for eight years in, uh, in Germany at the University in Tübingen. 
and um, he also gained his PhD from there. Um, he uh, started uh, teaching uh, robotics in, in Lahore uh, and also um, uh, started a lab uh, on, on robotics there um, for students uh, to promote robotics in, in Pakistan. And um, Dr. Khan organized uh, many national and international uh, level robotics uh, events um, in, in the field. Uh, so he joined the uh, University of Lahore in 2017 and um, is now a director of research uh, of the research group on robotics and Internet of Things. So, um, Dr. Nias, thank you very much for, for joining us and for being the moderator here in our, uh, in our today's session. And I hand over to my colleague in Karachi, Maren Dick, uh, who will give you a short presentation of our speaker. Yes, uh, thank you, Christine. Um, yes, we are uh, very happy that we um, have uh, Mark Huyat from the uh, Fraunhofer Institute for Factory Operation and Automation in Germany um, here with us today. Um, the Institute um, focuses on uh, research and support of industri industrial, uh, medium sized, and small companies. And uh, Mr. Kuyat is uh, the research manager and expert engineer in logistics and factory systems and um, has been uh, in this position since 2014 and also is the cluster manager of the innovation cluster ERWIN, energy and resource efficient value chains. Um, he will... Um, give a short presentation today about the potentials and risks of artificial intelligence in the industrial process. And yeah, I think we are all um, very um, waiting what he has to say about that. And I think I would hand over for a short introduction to Dr. Uh, Nias and um, then we go on with the presentation. Thank you, Marin and Christine for the introductions. Uh, welcome you all today evening to this uh, interesting and knowledgeable session on artificial intelligence. Um, I would ask you all to when you when you join and yeah, when you are not <clears throat> when you're listening just to mute your microphones. Uh, after the session you can ask questions. So we have two uh, modes to ask questions box and we'll get to them. Or uh, if you want to ask your question with voice and video, you just raise your hand and uh, turn button. We will give you your, your turn uh, to be able to ask the question. So with that, I hand over uh, the mic to Mark for his presentation. Yeah, thank you as well for the warmly uh, introduction. And dear Mr. Um, Consul General, uh, Mr. Ziegler, um, thank you, the audience, uh, for uh, welcoming me to this uh, um, lecture session um, for this um, yeah, quite interesting topic of the potentials and risk of artificial intelligence in an industry 4.0. Um, the Consul General uh, was talking about um, that there is a revolutionary uh, topic um, for um, all uh, industrial participants uh, worldwide. And I would like to um, step into this um, topic and will uh, focus on uh, different aspects. Um, in general, um, the aspects um, of the surrounding um, conditions um, that are necessary to install um, this systems, um, but also I give some insights in the technical view. First of all, um, um, Ms. Dick uh, gave a short introduction to Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer is uh, um, the Gesellschaft um, or Association for Applied Research, the biggest uh, one in Europe. And we are um, sitting in Magdeburg and uh, I uh, will welcome you here from my home office as well uh, within the COVID-19 um, surroundings. Um, but um, um, in the normal um, uh, day, I am focused and working on the shop floors of our industrial um, customers. Uh, we are oriented um, to the different research topics of intelligent work systems, um, as well as resource efficient production and logistics, um, where I uh, am working for and convergence supply infrastructures. Um, 
it is um, our uh, mission uh, to have a flexible, more flexible and efficient um, industrial production uh, solutions that are um, practice focused. And um, we are challenged to have it in a more sustainable and uh, human designed way. Um, and especially um, we are cooperating um, with um, um, SMEs, uh, small and medium sized uh, enterprises um, to give them um, the chance to um, participate to cutting edge technologies. Yeah, um, what is uh, the reason um, that you have me here as your speaker? First of all, um, uh, me and my uh, group, um, we have um, a lot of uh, experiences in this field of competence. Um, also uh, have um, given a proof uh, of competence because of uh, different uh, successful pro uh, projects um, that are already um, are installed. And um, we um, started um, as well as the Centrum for Industrial Intelligence um, two years ago. And I'd um, like to sum up um, that we have reliable solutions um, in use, also with um, big uh, companies um, like um, uh, BMW or um, um, Daimler in the automotive sector as well. A short introduction um, to me, it's not necessary because uh, Ms. Dick uh, gave it to you. Um, I had different experiences in um, approximately 20 uh, projects within focus of Industry 4.0, uh, especially um, well, also in the in intercultural, intercultural um, uh, context. Um, I've been to Kazakhstan as well as to Ukraine, China and Singapore. And currently I'm working on my doctoral project as well. Um, and um, I'm focusing the collaborative production planning and control systems. Um, so um, I think um, our moderation team uh, gave you uh, some uh, questions to have a sh the chance to interact with you um, as a, um, to the audience. Um, so um, for me, it's um, interesting or for us, it's interesting. Um, from where do you um, look and listen to us as well as the question, what experiences and what background um, do you have? And all in all, um, what's about um, um, do, uh, artificial intelligence that fascinates you? I think um, it's possible to, get, um, to go into uh, the details after my um, introductional uh, speech. So I um, uh, had, I gave, um, um, my presentation, um, three topics. Um, first of all, I would like um, to uh, introduce um, the topic uh, artificial intelligence and um, answer the question, what uh, and chance and disenchance artificial intelligence and what's the um, idea of this technology push for a next industrial age. Um, afterwards, um, I will focus um, on the industrial sites and the advantages of the methodical application. And all in all, I give um, an outlook um, of the transformation to an industrial intelligence. So, um, as we have heard um, from um, the introduction, um, there is a um, um, big um, challenge, um, global challenge from an European perspective as well. Um, in Germany, um, we have um, the challenge um, that we are, uh, would like to se secure the European um, value creation um, location and also um, fight against the poverty all over the world. So we have a kind of acceleration of society in a globalized world. This is, um, first of all, a big topic. Um, focused on uh, production improvements, uh, we would like um, to develop more efficient um, and digitalized um, systems, and especially the focus of automation. And um, um, as well to optimize and simplify um, the production stream streamline and workflows um, more and more in a sustainable way. And I think um, this is um, the, the biggest challenge uh, for us um, as a population um, to to uh, force um, this climate crisis um, that requires answers um, and now quickly and revolutionary um, the way um, that Fridays for Future is fighting um, kind of a persistence of humanity. And uh, we have seen um, the influence of, uh, influence of COVID-19 um, on our in, in the international uh, supply chain networks um, that they're uh, kind of uh, fragile. 
here um, you have um, um, a topic or a um, slide of uh, Siemens um, that uh, start, they started or was uh, were one of the beginners um, that have started 2014, the topic of Industry 4.0. Uh, I've been to uh, Singapore and they told to me it's not Industry 4.0 um, because it's kind of a trademark of the, the German um, uh, industry uh, participants um, to have a revolution of Industry 4.0 because, um, as we have heard, um, the Chinese... Um, government uh, is focusing um, the strategy program of China 2025 um, to um, um, become the leading um, um, yeah, population um, um, for um, the 10 uh, most significant um, industry trends. Um, the um, US American uh, on the other side, uh, on the other side uh, are focusing the more uh, customer-based um, innovation and changing it um, to new business models. And we in Germany, especially, um, um, are focusing the topics of revolution um, to the shop floor uh, for industrial uh, technologies. So I think um, this example here um, um, shown on the slide shows uh, well uh, how the holistic approach can help to develop um, kind of innov innovative solutions for Industry 4.0 um, to make um, significant contribution to protecting the environment and uh, natural resources. Um, as you can see here, the potentials, um, right hand, um, to um, reduce the time to the market by 50%, um, as well as uh, reduce maintenance and repair costs by 40%. Um, but the question is, uh, why um, does it um, um, fit? And here we have um, on top the three um, uh, drivers um, as well, that it is, uh, we will have innovative products, services, and um, business models. Um, and we have also kind of um, um, innovation uh, technologies um, um, among the supply chain networks. Um, we have networked um, and consistency from development um, to production to the um, phase of use and um, to the disposal and also um, kind of horizontal networking um, via the existing um, automation pyramid top down and bottom up from the enterprise resource um, and production systems to the shop floor and otherwise as well. Falling sensor costs uh, as a driver of a digitization. Here you can see that there is um, um, a significant uh, negative growth rate um, to the sales price of sensors. So we have um, um, flushing um, uh, sensors to the market. And then um, in Germany, there was a political discussion about the fact that every milk can must be on the internet. And um, this data will be available in the near um, future. So new indications uh, available to allocate um, and to, to different conditions. And um, this is um, the, the reason that uh, we are in the logistic um, um, yeah, field, uh, we are talking about the six right ones in logistics. Um, so it means the right material in the right time, in the right place, in the right, right amount, in the right quality and in the right costs and um, for sure provided under corporate social responsibility. And now um, in the near future, it will be uh, possible because sensors are available. Um, here you can see um, the Gartner hype cycle um, within the five um, um, most significant technologies in the near future. So as I said, sensors and mobility, as well as assistance systems um, to humans. So we have an interaction um, between uh, human and machine, and um, we will have a revolution um, to uh, from post-classical computing to new communication solutions uh, within digital ecosystems. And um, last but not least, advanced uh, artificial intelligence and analytics. And as you can see here uh, on this um, um, slide, we have uh, the expectations um, uh, measured um, to the time um, of, um, of, yeah, between the different uh, plateaus. And um, on the um, top of expectation level, we have um, HIE, emotion, um, RE, explainable RE, 
and um, an adaptive machine learning. So in uh, different topics, um, we have the chance to focus on later on in the discussion. This technology push um, um, is a fact. And here you can see that artificial intelligence and chance, but why? Um, there is a Moore's law um, and this law says that um, there is an exponential uh, growth of computing capacities. And following this, we have a duplication of computer capacity every um, 12 um, to 24 months. And um, uh, in comparison, watch at this slide. Um, we will um, soon um, reach um, the level that um, the brain power will um, have the complexity of um, the behavior of um, to place uh, mouses. Um, also, especially in a new um, focused future, um, one human about 2023. Um, and it's um, here the question, um, if the development of narrow uh, artificial intelligence we have now um, um, and um, the situation of um, general artificial intelligence soon. Um, but the question is, um, is there new generation of computer chips available? Um, and which uh, artificial intelligence algorithms um, are available to um, reach a kind of a singularity. As I said as well, um, we are working on um, principles of quantum technologies. And here we have new procedures um, to have greater diversity uh, instead of binary data processing within computer chips. So we had a, a different um, developments uh, where um, computer uh, programs uh, um, were better than uh, um, the, the human intelligence. So first of all, in 1996, um, where the IBM Deep Blue uh, beats the chess star Garry Kasparov, um, he were fighting against um, learning of um, the optimal weighting parameters on the um, basis of thousands of Masters games and um, by analyzing and calculating um, about 126 million playing positions per second. Um, as well as um, 2011, where IBM Watson um, um, was smarter than Jeopardy freaks. Um, here we had a semantic search engine for image text and speech, speech recognition. In uh, 2015, um, the Google DeepMind AlphaGo um, outwits Go professionals um, based on reinforcement learning um, that had and policy network with 30 million moves by human experts as a basis of the position evaluation in the value network with combined application of Monte Carlo tree search. And um, finally, 2019, Pluris from Facebook rips off poker assets. Uh, now I would like to go into the more into the details. Um, what is it about and what's the difference between um, artificial intelligence and a, a, a convenient uh, a simulation model. Um, first of all, um, there are um, learning uh, complex nonlinear uh, functions, um, and it's the idea to identify patterns from data. So, um, so there are uh, algorithms that are very good um, for this predictions of patterns, um, but um, they are require they, they require extensive, correct, and relevant initial data. Um, here we have black box and gray box models. Um, that are not direct visible. It's one of the uh, most interesting um, research topic to um, have more gray box models on it. And um, we have the risk of um, um, to control the learning process um, um, against the um, principle of overlearning effects. On the other hand, there are um, mathematical models and simulations. Um, here we um, have a specific knowledge of um, probability theory and mathematical statistics required. We have a careful um, preparation of these hypotheses um, that is necessary, um, but um, all in all, there are uh, quite um, static models. All in all, um, uh, we are feeding the computer with data and program to getting result. Um, and on the other hand, by, um, using machine learning algorithms, we are feeding the computer with the data um, and with the result um, to get um, the models uh, um, that uh, are um, identified um, the relevant patterns.
So um, artificial intelligence, um, therefore, is faster than most of analytical methods um, for processing large amounts of data. Um, but the challenge is um, the complex problems um, always require a um, combination of analytical methods and artificial intelligence as well. There are different um, types um, of learning methods um, and um, different models. Um, so first of all, we have supervised learning. Um, it is known uh, the methods of regression and classification. Um, with um, supervised learning, um, it is meant um, the ability of an artificial, artificial intelligence to uh, reproduce laws, um, the basic um, algorithms as well. Um, these uh, results are known um, through natural laws um, of expert knowledge and are used to learn um, the system. Then we have unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning refers to machine learning with no target values known in advance and no reward from environment. The machine tries to detect patterns uh, in the input data that differ from the structureless noise. And um, hyped um, currently are um, the methods of um, reinforcement learning and reinforcement learning uh, um, is a set of uh, machine learning methods in which an agent um, independently learns a strategy to maximize the rewards received. Um, here we have uh, also focusing uh, artificial uh, neural you know, networks and other uh, methods as well. Um, now I would like to go um, in some uh, details of the industrial focus. Um, here um, we have a slide of a Boston Consulting Group um, that identified in the year 2018 um, the potentials of artificial intelligence. And um, as I uh, said, um, in um, production logistics, we are focusing the um, right principles um, um, of the surroundings um, of um, production. And, and here um, it is, uh, you can see um, different potential as well. A 7% of reduction of capital um, costs, um, yeah, one si um, side or 50% um, by reduction of product development costs. Then um, I will present um, this uh, slide of Boston Consulting Group. Um, here um, they summarize the different potentials of artificial intelligence solutions within the production. Um, we have uh, one topic that machines optimize their working condition independently um, on the um, material that is uh, going through the um, workshop. Um, we will see in the near future virtual um, agents um, providing machines um, with information uh, from IT systems on request. Um, also as autonomous vehicles um, that transport parts and um, uh, recognize obstacles um, in the correct um, route. Um, I think also this is a, a good slide um, to go into detail um, within the discussion uh, afterwards. What is the... Um, development cycle um, uh, and how does it work? Today in the factories, uh, we need um, um, the determination of influencing factors um, by uh, human experts. Um, so we have classical um, process and control systems. Um, and um, we um, take these routes from experts and the um, part of um, artificial intelligence is small. So we are um, collecting and um, proceeding um, only events and status information. Um, and we have an interpretation uh, with good feeling, um, so-called. Um, the next step, um, the factory tomorrow, um, we have a combination of experts and artificial intelligence using machine learning methodology and have a training with um, examples by um, artificial intelligence algorithms. So uh, we will have pattern recognition in existing data and using forecast um, data as a basis for decision-making. So in uh, our um, research projects um, with automotive uh, industry, for example, um, we are focusing, the, focusing these topics. And um, the factory in a, a decade, um, we uh, will reduce the influence of expert knowledge uh, and have um, um, deep learning networks where artificial intelligence uh, train is trained by examples. So um, we have a control base on data um, and we will um, anticipate uh, events and conditions. So this is one overview. So now um, 
I would like to show you um, three examples, um, what it is possible. And um, these are uh, references from uh, my uh, colleagues and from me uh, within the industrial um, um, experience. First of all, um, we have um, an, um, the application that um, there is a condition forecast to increase the system availability. Um, as you can see here, um, the results uh, with uh, up um, to 98% of forecast quality for an horizon of one hour. What was the problem? Um, we have a kind of uh, machinery um, that is using these nozzles and these nozzles are um, have downtimes, unexpected downtimes, but um, it's not possible to uh, analyze a uh, um, few amount uh, of um, these events. Um, so uh, it's necessary to combine um, this neural networks with Fuji logic. Um, and in this combination, uh, it was possible um, to identify these events. So um, we were using um, kind of air pressure data as well as the volume flow um, data um, and also used process parameters. So in this, in this combination, it was possible to warn um, techni technicians um, by a forecast that um, these um, events um, are expected. Second, um, uh, example um, was um, um, is my project um, with a big automotive company. Um, here it was the task um, to uh, give a forecast uh, of the real uh, competition time to deliver um, the um, produced cars on the right uh, delivery slot. Um, it was um, based on different uh, interruptions in the production. Um, they had before not the uh, chance to um, have a, a good qu um, quality to this data. So um, um, we um, used here um, the different data, all the data um, and, and product uh, specifies as well as uh, different um, production sequences and data from the quality, quality management. So um, um, if there were uh, events of interruptions in the production line, um, it was uh, possible um, to um, have um, to take care um, with correlation analysis to this um, distribution uh, dis um, distinguishing um, variables um, and also um, to use it um, by scheduling these forecasts with, uh, based on this in the decision tree. So um, here also we had um, uh, we're, we're focusing topics of data integration within cloud services um, and um, had um, or, or um, installed the system in a way that um, it was. Uh, possible to have a um, high um, level and grade of modularity. And the third example here, um, um, the task was um, that there were uh, no or lack of transparency um, within the measurement of energy data. Um, and um, my colleague here installed um, kind of soft sensors um, and um, yeah, gave a relationship between the production parameters and the energy requirement. And um, so afterwards, it was possible to give a demand forecast um, on the operating behavior um, to um, evaluate um, the different consumers um, based on an aggregated measured value. So as you can see here on the right-hand side, um, the system uh, was available to uh, give a uh, good forecast um, and the measurement afterwards um, um, in comparison um, had a, a good quality. So it was possible to reduce um, the quantity of sensors uh, within the production. Finally, in focusing these uh, industrial topics, um, here I will show you our um, methodology to um, to set up these um, um, systems. Um, here um, we are um, going on this um, system engineering method that is starting with a situation analysis um, and the formulation of the goals. And here, um, especially 
um, data engineers are needed to have uh, with the uh, enterprises a uh, yeah, more distinct goal setting, to have process analysis, and to have also uh, feasibility studies, uh, which method is suitable uh, and um, yeah, good for the for the analysis. Then um, the second step um, is the uh, origin um, synthesis. Um, so we have data pre-positioning um, where um, the data collect is collected, um, pre-processed, and in the next step, um, the, we have the um, extraction of features. Different method, um, methods are available to have this. Um, and um, then we're gonna start uh, modeling by defining predictors um, um, and give that as input data to the model. Within um, the results uh, of these more different models, um, we have a comparison between the forecast and the measured data, as we have seen on the slides before. And um, analyzing the failure is possible to have the, here a kind of uh, learning um, cycle um, within the failure um, to adapt this algorithm. Um, and um, if in this study, um, um, if this study is um, finalized and uh, um, proceeded, um, it's possible to uh, deploy these models in an operating system. And then um, we have the model validation um, in comparison with the uh, initialized set of goals. So, um, and then we, um, it's possible to, to get this um, cycle uh, again and again. The Federal Association for Information Technology and Telecommunications, Bitcom, um, gave um, um, this kind of um, periodic table. And it is possible um, for um, industrial focused uh, system engineers um, to have a different construction kit. Um, so um, there are a lot of um, methods given for these recognition topics, uh, as you can see on the left side, uh, speech recognition, um, as well as uh, audio recognition. Um, there are a lot of uh, topics for face recognition as well. Um, and then um, in the middle of the slide, you can see uh, also um, uh, focused methodologies um, for more um, structured data analysis of um, industry processes, um, for example, a category learning. And we have also uh, topics of mobility, um, but they are not that uh, focused in industrial applications as well. To have a kind of an uh, uh, outlook, uh, I would like to show you here um, the diff different steps of technological uh, maturity. Um, and um, here in the wider uh, perspective of Industry 4.0, you can see that we, uh, a lot of enterprises are on the lean factory level um, using machinery data uh, and have uh, control loops in a kind of isolated uh, perspective of you. In the next step, um, using more and more um, sensor data, um, it is possible um, to have a more detailed process analysis and um, to go into um, the correlation anal analysis, um, combining in this kind of big data factory, production data, quality data, and logistics data. And then um, we have kind of game-changing events uh, when the network, um, the systems are networked. Um, and here, um, product data and process data is uh, um, combined to generate a kind of smart factory um, where we have advanced control systems um, and install forecast systems and um, um, the, the next level, um, it is uh, focused on the uh, uh, conceptual um, research topics is the step of autonomy. Uh, I would like to show you uh, one step, uh, one slide afterwards, uh, where we can see the different grades of autonomy, where we would like to have a high level of autonomous uh, um, systems. And um, when it is uh, kind of uh, integration within the supply chain network. Um, there is an industri industrial ecosystem installed between the value chain. As you can see here, um, different um, topics um, to level of automation from low to high. Um, on the low level, there is no computer assistance. Uh, we have um, practical partner uh, that are managing um, all decision uh, processes uh, manually. 
Um, next steps um, are that computers offers uh, a set of decisions um, with suggested measures. It's also common known. Um, and um, on the next on higher levels, um, the computer uh, more and more um, gets into the system and uh, take um, the decisions. I think, as you can see um, within the title, maximum um, um, nowadays is uh, level five, um, where computer executes suggestions and a human um, um, is in the um, need to release it. Okay, what is crucial, um, or what are what are the risk risks um, install the systems? Right, uh, first of all, we have to. Uh, consider that uh, humans um, choose um, the number of algorithms are the system designer as well. Um, that the algorithms are learning in most of these uh, solutions from the um, uh, training data that were selected by the people. We have um, also decision rules that are finally assessed by the uh, uh, humans uh, criteria and um, also, the new data uh, within installed systems are selected by humans uh, in our days. So um, we have a kind of um, kind of dependency um, within these systems. And uh, all in all, as we can have seen it in the slide before, um, there's uh, the need of an interpretation. Um, my final conclusion, uh, sorry about that for this interrupted uh, uh, presentation, but uh, I gave a, a short uh, a conclusion. Um, there is a big uh, um, potential in terms of especially logistical targets and dealing with a shortage of um, uh, skilled workers. It's necessary to um, differentiate um, the uh, cases um, by risk classes. In some cases, for example, uh, artificial intelligence copies human weaknesses. So therefore, uh, get it, don't copy it, um, and go into the detail, install, um, especially um, yeah, data engineers um, and not just data uh, analytics pro um, and professionals um, and take aware, uh, away from any fears um, and um, yeah, uh, raise uh, the awareness of this topic. Especially um, it is it's necessary um, to have the right circumstances and um, the requirements um, to install these um, systems and uh, yeah, here it's it's necessary to have um, more accessibility, availability, and um, set of data that is free of error. So um, first of all, I think it's uh, <laughs> I'm done with with my uh, presentation um, and this point of view. Yeah. Okay, thanks, uh, Mark, for the very nice presentation, very informative presentation, and. Sorry for the interruptions that were caused. So maybe I ask a couple of questions and then uh, we would uh, figure out a way to take questions from audiences. Uh, we plan to take uh, some uh, voice questions, but obviously that is not a good idea. So we would only uh, allow text questions uh, and filter through them. So Mark, my first, my first question is that, uh, you know, artificial intelligence was invented in uh, invented like more than 50 years ago. So there was in 50s, there was a boom and then it faded away. And then there was again a rise in artificial intelligence and then it failed again. So they have the, these like side wave things. And now there is another boom. So what makes us confidence that this time it won't go away and it won't fail us? Um, I'm aware um, of this um, historical development of this uh, topic, um, but I think um, never before um, we had um, this availability of, uh, of um, data um, and of, uh, of these surroundings of technology. So um, there is uh, not one uh, methodology, not one uh, algorithm given. Um, there is a, a big um, variety of um, technologies. And also, and this is, uh, I think it is um, um, a benefit of the uh, conceptual work, especially as, uh, within Industry 4.0, uh, topics in uh, Germany and in Europe, um, that there is a um, um, big discussion um, um, to the surroundings. So to, um, 
to be sure that you have uh, the circumstances um, using the solutions in the right way um, to have no misuse um, and no um, misinterpretation of the results. And I don't think that um, this uh, was given before. And so we have also had uh, isolated um, solutions um, in uh, uh, early um, yeah, status. Uh, thank you for the answer. Another question is that I have also had some experience with uh, working with the industry. So I have faced two problems. First problem is that um, when we uh, take a problem from the industry and try to apply artificial intelligence, the artificial intelligence or the machine learning part comes much later. First, there is a lot of problem with the data itself. That probably is the is in the data science domain. So cleaning the data or even asking uh, the organization to collect the data that would be useful for you is a big challenge. So how do we cope with that? Yeah, as I said, and this is um, the, the reason that we are in, in our uh, research activities, we are focusing, um, give a, a, a brighter setup um, of these solutions, um, as you said, to, uh, to um, have this uh, data um, uh, clearing uh, as first, um, and more and more the systems are um, uh, designed using um, 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 kind of um, open platform communications as a standard. OPC UR uh, is more and more established um, within these solutions. Uh, and so uh, we have um, the chance um, to install uh, operating systems and not that um, kind of testing uh, balloons. So now with the advent of uh, deep learning, everybody is now talking about deep learning. So do you think that deep learning will uh, take over the traditional machine learning methods and the potential for that? Um, I think in, uh, in consumer uh, focused, um, um, consumer focused um, solutions, um, it is more and more uh, revolutionary because um, we, here we have Im image recognition uh, based on deep learning algorithms. Um, um, and, but um, especially in industrial um, applications, um, we are using machine learning um, in a con more con convenient and classical way um, um, because here we have structured um, data and kind of uh, tables and kind of uh, um, machinery data uh, extracted. And here it's uh, um, the chance to, to use uh, clustering algorithms as well. So deep learning is uh, in, in this case, not the first idea of uh, the use, but using, using more and more um, images, uh, especially for analyzing uh, quality, um, aspects uh, to have a material um, the, or to, to assess uh, the quality of, uh, uh, of materials, for example. So um, you uh, proceed um, and process more and more uh, images as data. Um, and there, here we have the chance to, to use uh, deep learning algorithms. So there is a question from the audience that, uh, is there any difference between uh, industry uh, 4.0 and industrial IoT? Yeah, it belongs to um, to this interpretation of the circumstances. Um, and the the IoT um, uh, topic, um, in my point of view, is a kind of uh, a baseline or the the, the uh, uh, requirement for an industry 4.0, industry 4.0. And um, within industry 4.0, uh, we are focusing also topics of business um, ethics and more um, in general, also um, the consumer benefit. But, it's, but it's, for sure, it's also by um, the topic of um, uh, IoT. So there is another question that control loops are designed to ensure safety and stability. So are there any uh, um, testing met methods to test these control loops? Yeah, they are, they are different. Um, uh, operating these, these um, algorithms, for sure, there are uh, a lot of tools uh, given 
um, to to set up these control loops. But uh, um, it's also in our um, experience, it's necessary to have more and more in, um, management of the different model uh, versions, um, also to um, modularize um, these um, um, solution models, uh, modules, um, to have um, uh, the possibility of um, configuration and um, to set the right parameters. And here we have, uh, I think, a kind of a uh, tool gap yet. So the next question is, um, which algorithm is nowadays good? As you mentioned, supervised and unsupervised algorithms. So the person says that it's very much curious to know, uh, as he has done one project with DLR to predict the flight delays and industry 4.0 is also very attractive for him as he has a module in his master thesis where mm -hmm. he study about the uh, mm -hmm. industry. So it's a very general question that yeah. which algorithm is good. Yeah, um, I think um, uh, in the common uh, research, uh, um, um, world um, the, the um, methodology of reinforcement learning um, is uh, a bit hyped uh, nowadays uh, so uh, everybody uh, is gonna focus uh, to use um, reinforcement learning uh, but um, especially on the first steps are uh, using uh, machine learning and production um, um, based on an first awareness awareness raising by the um, um, the people in the shop floor, um, it is um, better, um, we think, to, to use uh, also um, supervised um, learning as well to, uh, to analyze the first uh, kind of uh, classification and regression, have pre-processing, um, and then um, afterwards uh, go uh, further and more deeper into using kind of uh, reinforcement setups. In such kind of presentations, there is always a question that will the introduction of artificial intelligence make people lose their jobs? Um, yeah, that, <laughs> it's a crucial, uh, a cru crucial topic. Um, um, uh, as I uh, introduced um, um, in my, one of my first slides, um, in a global uh, or in a um, European perspective of view, um, for us, it's not um, that crucial question because we um, um, have uh, a kind of uh, kind of a lack of uh, skilled people. Uh, so um, um, within uh, our society, um, the people getting um, older and older. So uh, we have um, we have a, um, a gap of uh, of uh, good qualified people in the production. So. Um, and therefore, uh, we need this kind of um, assistance systems based on artificial intelligence. And as I um, sh have shown you um, as well, um, there is uh, a long way to get these uh, full, fully um, automated um, systems. So uh, we will have a kind of transformation um, um, horizon of I think of an, one decade um, up to 2030, and then. Um, we have a kind of new generation of, of young production uh, um, and, and good um, um, skilled um, um, people um, that are common with this, um, that are um, well um, yeah, educated in uh, data engineering and data anal analysis as well. Okay, let's take the last question from the audience. Uh, Mr. Sabi asks, so far, I haven't seen any data-based stability analysis of a process control system. So could you share your experience with that? Yeah, um, it is it's common uh, within the Industry 3.0, um, the use of um, um, statistic process control. Um, here we have um, 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 in application, um, yeah, st static uh, models. Um, and I... I do not have seen any models um, using machine learning, but I know um, we have analyzed, um, um, especially one of my students analyzed um, um, manufacturing execution systems um, that are um, um, suitable um, in the European context. Um, 
Um, and there um, um, we have identified that the um, enterprises uh, are dealing with these topics. So I think um, it's coming soon. Okay, thank you, Mark, for a very nice presentation, for your patience through the disturbance and uh, taking the questions from the comments. It seems that the disturbance was international. Uh, we apologize for that. And thank you for keeping the patience. Now, I would like to uh, transfer the mic to Mr. Siegler for his comments to end the session. Thank you for the presentation. We've heard a lot. We've seen a lot. We've seen all the possibilities um, that uh, the modern world offers, not only in the production field, not only in the subject matter of um, the talk that we heard tonight, but everything also that we're facing nowadays. Um, the host has talked about uh, the possibilities, opportunities, challenges in artificial intelligence. Uh, as you have seen, um, not only the Internet of Things can be hacked, but naturally also um, if we use more and more control in um, Industry 4.0, I'm still translating it Industry 4.0, um, the more uh, we are also open to the potential influences from the outside. More challenges actually for the security industry, more challenges for training um, of um, um, operators that then can keep our tools and our science and our discussions safe. Uh, I think it was a lively session, particularly because of the disturbances, because um, we see what kind of world we're in and what we're dealing with. Um, I'm also very happy to have seen that um, there are worthy people who continue what I have started uh, 30 years ago. Um, although, please do not throw me and um, the people of my age uh, out with the old iron, as we say in German. Do not, do not throw us out as, as used cars. We're still running the world. We're still keeping you young guys um, to come to the front, and we're enabling um, all these activities that we have here. We're participating. Um, I have three boys, 27, 25, 22. Um, the young um, force from Germany is also in the field. Um, I try to compete with them sometimes on the computer. Sometimes I still beat them. Most of the time they tell me new things. Um, thank you for being here tonight um, in our lecture in order to enable us all to learn new things. I hope we can continue this in the future. And I hope we can continue to cooperate between Pakistan and Germany. We can learn a lot from each other. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much, Mr. Ziegler, and, and also thanks to, uh, to our uh, speaker, to Mr. Kujat in, in Germany. Thanks to, to our moderator, um, um, Mr. Mr. Nias in Lahore. Thanks to, to the technicians in, in Germany. Thanks a lot to Eva for the support. And um, yeah, of course, thanks a lot to all the participants who made this session very lively and very interesting. So have a nice evening, everyone, and hope to see you soon again.